Generating traffic and sales can be a challenge for online merchants. But selling on the Walmart marketplace puts your products in front of millions of customers who shop on walmart.com. And right now, sellers who join Walmart Marketplace can save up to 50% on referral and fulfillment fees for the first 90 days. So get started today. Head over to marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. That's marketplace.walmart.com slash savings. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations, a weekly podcast focusing on e-commerce topics featuring interviews with prominent people in the e-commerce space. Welcome to E-Commerce Conversations by Practical E-Commerce. My name is Kerry Murdoch. Sophisticated site search helps consumers find products on an e-commerce site and therefore increases sales. But site search can also work with faceted category navigation to help consumers too. The blending of site search with faceted category navigation is our topic today. And to explain it, we are joined by Scott Zelensky co-founder of SearchSpring, a leading search solution provider. Well, Scott, thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me, Kerry. Scott, your company, SearchSpring, SearchSpring provides uh, site search services, uh, sophisticated site search services, uh, I should say, for e-commerce merchants. Uh, My first question is, why do merchants need sophisticated site search? Um, well, you know, the biggest thing with that is out of the box on m- most e-commerce systems, the, the site search system is what I call a white or black type search. It lacks many of the advanced features and functionality that a third party uh, search provider can bring. Um, number one of that is, is being pure relevancy, allowing the customers to, to get the expected results they're looking for when they type in that search term or keyword into the search box. Um, and several different components go into that. Uh, one of those, for example, would be uh, stemming. Uh, what stemming is going to do is, um, or give you an example of that, is if I did a, a search for shirts, uh, I'm going to want results for the word shirt to come back as well. Also takes into consideration things uh, like, like pro- pro- pluralization um, and punctuation, um, hyphens, and things of that nature. Uh, another capability is being able to give them suggestions um, two different ways. One is through did you mean. So if someone were to type in a misspelling, maybe I type in yellow with one L um, or, or something similar to that, it's going to give me the suggestion of, of yellow with the proper spelling. Another is suggested search terms. And basically what you can do with that is give your customers suggestions of what they searched um, or, or give them suggestions of what they might be looking for based on what they searched for. So how does a merchant uh, manage all of that? So let's say in your example of, of uh, shirts, the merchant, how does a merchant know to, that his users, his or her users may be typing in, say, blouse rather than shirt? And so he, wants to, he or she wants to change it so that if someone types in blouse or shirt, if I could use that example, uh, a shirt or a blouse will come up. How do they manage that? Well, there's two different ways. A lot of it can be done dynamically. Um, if it's things like shirts, t-shirts, uh, shirt, t-shirt, you know, based on the hyphen or pluralization, the search system will do that automatically. Um, if it's more, uh, if, if the differences are, are larger, such as blouse versus search, well, then we have uh, a synonym system built into our console to where they can actually map keywords to other keywords. Uh, a common example that I use is if I sell uh, motocross parts and I have several of my customers doing a search for the word rim, but yet I use the word wheels in all my description, I can easily create a synonym so that when someone does a search for rim, it pulls back the search term for wheels. That makes sense. Now, you mentioned some cart solutions have a built-in search feature. You've addressed that. Obviously, Google 
has its own on-site search feature, which is free. A cart feature is free. Uh, is it worth it to merchants? Uh, obviously, it is worth it, worth it to merchants to pay money for a search solution versus using a, a, a free one. Yeah, you know, uh, there's a lot of lot of added value um, that comes with with a solution or, or a paid solution. Um, I like to use the term um, "you get what you pay for" a lot, but that's always not necessarily the case. Um, price really doesn't dictate the value these days. Um, the you know the the solution that you're going to be getting with with a third party provider is going to be you know a comprehensive administration panel uh, in most cases to where you can really get in there and dial in your search, um, really really fine tune it um, to to what your product set is. Um, you're also going to get a feature set that's not going to be available in your e-commerce platform or with Google. Things like the faceted navigation, allowing your customers to drill down uh, their search results by things like color or size, or maybe it's year, make, and model for automotive parts. Um, the suggested terms, or the did you mean? Uh, and also another characteristic of, of a lot of um, third-party solutions is being able to leverage uh, historical shopping behavior and essentially make your, your your search become smarter and smarter as the more people use it. Um, by harvesting the, the, sh the shopping behavior from the customers. You mentioned, uh, you alluded there to faceted type search versus uh, regular site search, or faceted navigation, I should say. That, that was the next question I was going to ask you. Uh, if, we can, uh, if we can visualize a consumer coming to an e-commerce site, uh, I guess the consumer would have two methods principally to find a specific product. One would be through site search and one would be through the category navigation or faceted navigation. Uh, what What is more important to a merchant uh, of those two methods? What do consumers use the most? Do they use search or do they use faceted category navigation? Yeah, that's that's actually a great question. That comes up all the time. And, and really the answer is, is they're both equally important. Um, analytics will consistently, consistently show that visitors who use your search will make up about 15 to 30 percent, let's say on average, of your overall visits, uh, leaving the other 70 percent to use your, your category navigation. However, though, the visits with search typically have a conversion rate, which is two to three times higher, um, and that's consistent across all industries. Um, so analytics will also show that a store's revenue drive is uh, almost equally from users who search and users who browse. So you may only have 15 to 20 percent of your customers that actually use search, but it could be driving 50 percent or more of your overall revenue. Meaning that, as I as I hear you say that 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 stands the reason I think because if someone's searching for a specific product, they pretty is it fair to say they they're they're pretty sure as to what it is they want, and they're looking for a specific product versus browsing through and just kind of seeing what you have. Yeah, that's a that's a layman's term of describing that, but is that why that dynamic is the way it is? Yeah, yeah. Typically, you know, when you know customers are are very you know schooled in in, in the world of Google today, and when they type in a keyword, they expect to get what they're looking for immediately. Um, and that's I think that's why the conversion rates are much higher with search is that. When they type in that, that keyword on the search, they're getting to what they're looking for uh, a lot quicker and more efficient than having to go through a hierarchy of categories. Um, yet, it's still a popular way of navigating. You know, 70% or more of your customers are still going to be using that method to navigate the site. So again, it's 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 very important, um, uh, equally as a site search, because you know, two to three times higher conversion over 50% of the revenue. Those are huge numbers to take in consideration as well. Now, now, considering the faceted category search, that is frequently rigid, if I could use that term, in that it's it's programmed in in terms of someone is going to a consumer is going to go to a site and go through the different categories, and what appears is the way the cart is set up essentially for that navigation. Uh, 
black black and white type type navigation to use your term but it doesn't have to be that way and I know that your your company uh, search spring has strategies to blend those together so that a consumer can use can go through the faceted category uh, navigation and have dynamic results with that if I'm phrasing that right can you describe can you describe how that works if I am understanding it correctly yeah yeah absolutely um, you know a lot of people come to search spring with their traditional category hierarchy and in you know traditional terms or measures they would have to create these uh, a magnitude of, of subcategories for all the possible different combinations uh, if I wanted the customers to really be able to drill down by you know say color and size well, I've got to create all these different combinations of categories, and then that doesn't even solve the problem because it's still creating a one-way route to the product in a sense. What SearchSpring has is a, an AJAX implementation that kind of lays right on top of your, your existing category pages that will bring in all of the fastening cap capabilities right on top of that existing or that top-level category page. So once I hit, um, you know, let's say automotive parts, I can quickly select the year, make, and model, for example, and it's going to refine my results right there instantly on the page without reloading, without me having to, um, you know, figure out the category hierarchy that I need to get to. So the cool thing about that is, is that I could maybe pick make first and then model, or maybe if I'm another customer, I'm going to pick model first and then make, but ultimately I'm going to get to the same result set. So now I have multiple paths that I can take to get to that to the, to the product that I'm ultimately looking for. So, in that example, uh, they get, I'm just reflecting on what you said, they get to the categories, so they, they start with the categories that are there, and then they click on a category, and that's where your dynamic navigation would take over. And so the merchant can control, after the consumer gets to the category, the merchant can control what it is that that consumer sees after that fact. Right, yep. So instead of having them drilling down into you know multiple subcategories or having the customer to figure out what your taxonomy is uh, you can you could place the the search spring Ajax navigation tool right on that top level category and it's going to bring you back all of the the facet values or attributes for that result set or those products within that category so now they can they can you know uh, filter or sort their results by any of those different characteristics instantly and in any different order. Give us an example of a merchant that can be one of your customers if you're able to name one of your customers or a merchant that is doing that. Give us some sort of live data or live examples of, of that working in practice. Yeah, uh, one example would be uh, Lukey Games, that's L-U-K-I-E, games.com. Um, they sell video games and components, and uh, they had a hierarchy of categories. And, and their top-level categories are, for example, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox. And they had uh, multiple levels of subcategories that categorized what the products were. What they were able to do is they brought SearchSpring right into that top-level positioning. So, for example, when you click on Nintendo or Xbox, you're seeing fascinating capabilities instantly on that top-level page which allows you to drill down instantly um, based on uh, what kind of system it may be, uh, uh, price facets or price ranges, um, and a couple of other characteristics as well. And it allows the customers to really find what they're looking for for the Nintendo system even quicker. It, it equates to less clicks in a sense. That example was Lukey Games, L-U-K-I-E Games. That's correct. Dot com? Yep. Yep. Does the, does it uh, in terms of implementation, implementing your your either your site search solution or blending that with existing categories uh, with the faceted navigation that you're describing to us, does that work with any cart? And I say that because listeners to this are using a variety of hosted carts, a variety of licensed carts, and I suspect some of them are going to be asking. How do I make that work with my system? Right. Um, and we really tried to take that into consideration when we're developing the system. 
we try to make it as simple as possible, as plug and play as possible. Um, the the AJAX system really deploys with a couple lines of JavaScript and a couple div tags. So I guess the answer to that question is, as long as you have some sort of template access um, to those pages, it's 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 very doable. And in fact, of every single shopping cart that we have worked uh, with to date, we have not run into a problem. So. As I can say right now, um, it's virtually compatible with every single shopping cart. Hosted license, any cart that you're aware of. Yep. Okay. Uh, we we tied it in with uh, with you know Big Commerce, Volusion, Yahoo, uh, Miva Merchant, Magento, um, you name it. We we pretty much integrated with it. That's great. How does the process work for uh, merchants that are listening to this? How does the process work in terms of implementation? So they've 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 gone to your site, SearchSpring.net, and they're they they've talked to your folks and they say, okay, I want to do it. How do they actually implement this and transfer over to your solution? Yeah, good question. So everything is data feed driven. Once we have a data feed of your products, and in most cases, or in a lot of shopping carts out there, we have a direct API integration, so where we don't even need a data feed. You tell us what shopping cart you're on, and we can suck that data down. Once we have the data, we can go in and configure your fields. We'll set up your, your search um, and, and really get it dialed into your, to your likings and, and what's best for your product set. Um, the integration process is really painless for our merchants. Not only is it uh, wizard-based and, and really, really point and click on our administration panel, but we have a full support team that will walk you through the process and in a sense, do 99% of the integration for you. We're, we're a full-service company. We're here to, to make sure that you get the best value um, from the product and the best experience. Um, so we're here from uh, to, to cater to the developers that want to get in there and, and take a stab at it on their own and um, you know, really hack it up and, and style it up. And, and then we have you know, the customers that they don't know anything about design or HTML, and, and we'll go in and we we do that completely for them as a service. What does it cost? What does your solution cost? Uh, the rate plan start out at $99 per month and go up from there. It's all based on usage. So we have uh, bucket pricing, so it's real cut and dry. There's no um, you know, special prices you know, based on quotations or anything like that. It's, it's you pay for what you're using. So that's the cost. So it starts at $99 per month. What have you seen with the other side of that equation in terms of what what can a merchant expect for a conversion increase or a sales increase by switching over to a dynamic solution? I realize that varies greatly from merchant to merchant based on the product, but what what can they see on the other side, on the sales side? Yeah, no, that's a good question, and I'm going to reference Lutie Games um, again. Uh, you know, they recently implemented our, our site search and the faceted uh, category navigation, um, and they were able to in a, attribute an immediate 27% jump in sales uh, with no other changes in ad spend or seasonal changes. Uh, their average order values went up, the time spent on pages went up, page views also moved up significantly. Um, so they saw a huge response, and this is pretty... Um, pretty common amongst our clients and, and a really cool thing that we've done recently is we we have a tie-in with Google Analytics right in your dashboard. So when you log in to your search spring console, the first thing you're going to see is what kind of revenue is my site search generating for me? Um, and it, we make those numbers really cut and dry for you so you can see exactly what's going on. In the instance of Luki Games, did they, did they implement site search and the blending of that with the faceted navigation uh, at the same time? Pretty much. Um, there was probably about a five-day window between the two. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in all sense, pretty much, yeah, at the same time. Let's shift gears just for a sec, uh, Scott, in the, in the time that we've got left. Tell us a little bit about SearchSpring for, for, for listeners that aren't familiar with your company. When was, when was SearchSpring founded? Who owns it? That sort of thing. Yes, absolutely. SearchSpring was founded about four years ago. Uh, it was founded by myself, Scott Zelensky, and Gareth uh, Dismore, which is our CTO. Um, we're a site search 
uh, and category navigation provider. Uh, we've been in the business for about 11 years. Before our our life as searchologists, we we were internet consultants, building out enterprise level platforms, and so it gave us a really good understanding of what our customers are looking for and, and what the best solution is. Okay, I like that word, searchologist. I have to remember that. <laughs> Hey, uh, we've got just another minute or so left, Scott. You're a you're a, a veteran of the e-commerce business, as you just alluded to, and now a, a search search business. Anything else in your mind for our listeners who are mainly e-commerce merchants? Yeah, you know, there's there's so many different things that you can take into consideration when you think about site search. Uh, you know, a few years ago, when you heard the term site search, you would you would attribute that to typing a keyword into the search box and here's your search results. And kind of as we discussed on our call today is that site search is, is a lot more to that these days. We've got the category navigation that can be you know, uh, powered by your site search. We've also got uh, mobile implementations now with, with the, the world of, of mobile growing and growing. That's another consideration you have to take into is, is uh, can I bring you know, an advanced site search solution to my mobile device? And the answer is yes. Um, we can bring site search into your Facebook, uh, allowing your customers to engage with your products through search and navigation on your Facebook. Uh, we've got uh, different mechanisms for uh, learning about your shopper's behavior and ultimately applying that to your category uh, navigation as well as site search. Um, you also have social navigation that you can think about when you're using your site search, maybe bringing in your, your product review data. Uh, so allowing your customers to, to filter and sort based on maybe pros and cons of the products or uh, their overall review rating. So and another thing is consistency. Allowing your site to have the same consistency, consistency between the category pages and your site search. What we hear a lot from our customers is when I, my customers are going through the, to the, through the category navigation, it's almost feel like it's one site in itself. And then when they do a search, it's another site because the entire appearance and look is different. Um, the biggest compliment that we've gotten from people is that when they've integrated Search Spring is that now their category pages and their site search is all seamless. It gives an overall better uh, usability or experience for the customer. Okay. Well, for purposes of our listeners, we've been visiting with Scott Zelinsky. Scott is the co-founder of Search Spring. That's a sophisticated site search provider, and as we've discussed in this interview, they also provide integrations and blending of site search with faceted navigation. Uh, that, that site is searchspring.net. Prior to founding SearchSpring, or co-founding SearchSpring, Scott was in the e-commerce business for many years in different categories and different, different, uh, different roles. And that's Scott Zelinsky, the co-founder of SearchSpring, the site is searchspring.net. And Scott, we want to thank you for your time today, sir. Thank you. That's all the time we have for this week's e commerce conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week for another new episode.